Hi, and welcome to the Medford Cable Network. I'm Jim Marshall. We have a special program here today. Today we are joined by Eric Russo. He's the administrator of the Southeast Regional Transit Authority. And beginning in January, uh, early January, there's going to be a change in the way CERTA, as it's otherwise known as, uh, the way people ride the buses here in New Bedford and in the surrounding area. Eric, thanks for joining us. Welcome. No problem. Thank you for having me. This is uh, a big change for the uh, for the organization, um, and it's it's going to be a busy time, I guess, for for you folks here as you start the new year with with this uh, kicking in. Absolutely, we you know we're we're launching two things at the same time, and thankfully they go together, but it makes it very difficult uh, overall to understand. First, we're changing our fare structure. Uh, so previously, if you were going to ride the bus, you paid per zone or you know, more simply per community that you traveled through. So if you wanted to travel from New Bedford to Fall River, you paid $1.25 per zone or $5 total to make that trip. Now with our new structure, you'll be able to make that trip for $1.50. And then on top of that, we're also bringing in new fare boxes to uh, be able to enhance pass types that we can offer and uh, get some more information about ridership data. For people who don't know, and I think uh, this is important too, just to go back and, and sort of, what is CERTA for the people that are watching that, that have never taken the bus, and I'm sure there are many out there. Well, we are the Southeastern Regional Transit Authority. Uh, we're one of 16 transit authorities in the state of Massachusetts. Um, and uh, we provide public transportation to 10 communities from Swansea to Mattapoisett, including New Bedford and Fall River. Uh, and uh, we provide almost 2 million trips a year for people riding fixed route and uh, almost 45,000 trips a year for people riding demand response service. So we're, we're here to help you get to where you need to go. CERTA has been around a long time. It's obviously, you know, it's been in the news as far as uh, uh, just trying to get the ridership up and what have you, and this mm -hmm. is obviously a way to help you as well. Um, why the change? Why, first, I guess, why the, why the fare change and then why the new machine? Uh, I think both of our, both our fare policy and our fare boxes themselves were just outdated. Uh, the public transportation industry used to be a profitable business. And in the 70s, there was a change where it became uh, subsidized by the government because it was no longer profitable for a private carrier. And initially, or originally, uh, a zone system made sense because you were charging five to 10 cents a zone. If you were traveling five zones, you paid 50 cents. It wasn't that big of a burden, but as prices went up, um, it, it started to sort of uneven or unequalized for the passengers that really needed it. It's a, it's a service that's subsidized for those who need it most. So what we're trying to do is just kind of get our fare policy in line with what most other RTAs are doing uh, across the Commonwealth and most places across the country. We're trying to give you a flat fare to get from point A to point B. And uh, we're also going to be offering a free transfer at the terminals for you to be able to continue on. So if you travel from the south end of New Bedford, you'll actually be able to make it all the way to Fall River for $1.50. I was talking to one of my coworkers here whose son goes to Bristol Community College, and she said now it's, it's going to be cheaper. Why? Why cut the price down? Huh? How does that work? Well, on the surface, it looks like a fair increase. Originally, we were $1.25 per zone. Uh, the transfers were also $1.25. So we've changed that to be $1.50 now, and that's a flat fare. So we did raise the base fare, uh, but the goal is to get more people on the bus. Uh, before we made this change, the average fare was $1.76 which was the highest in the Commonwealth. Uh, so we wanted to, you know, try to make the fare fair and let people pay their appropriate amount and hopefully people will be able to ride more often um, and we can grow our ridership. And also we are introducing new passes to make it more affordable to ride. What is the, um, listen, people always want cars. That you're, that's what you're battling is people mm -hmm. who want to be mobile and what have you. What does, in a sense, CERTA, or riding a bus, offer to uh, a commuter? Well, right now, it's, it's much more cost effective to ride pu public transportation. I think APTA, which is the American uh, Passenger Transportation Association, they, they list that an average transit user saves between eight and $9,000 a year when they're not paying for gas, they're not paying for auto insurance, they're not paying for a, a car loan or whatever it is that they're trying to, to cover. Um, so it can be very economical for somebody that needs an alternative uh, method for transportation. It is 
by far a uh, more green way of getting around. Your carbon footprint is reduced dramatically because you're sharing one vehicle with 10 or 15 people over the course of a trip versus you're riding in your one car and you're only driving yourself from point A to point B. Uh, those two things have really kind of driven uh, the younger population and the older population to move towards public transportation versus owning their own car. It was funny, I mean, you were talking about moments ago about how things have changed. I mean, uh, I guess in the 60s and 70s, people did ride the, the bus. They rode the train. The trains were big and the buses were big. And I guess obviously there was that shift to being more mobile. And uh, you know, obviously now you're trying to get it back. I think there's a perception too is, um, you were explaining to me, which was a great education off, uh, off air before the show started about um, the fact that where you get your monies from, mm -hmm. and it's a combination effort from everything. Right. We are uh, federally, state, and locally funded, and then the last uh, revenue stream we have is the fare box. So right now our fare box actually only covers about 13% of our operating cost, which is a little bit low. Uh, with this change, we hope to get up to about 20 to 25% of our operating cost covered through the fare box. And that, but unfortunately, that does come through additional ridership. So it's it's a little bit of a gamble. We're hoping that uh, people will come out and ride, and if they do come out and ride, it's a way that we'll be able to uh, use new resources to put out new services. So if we can grow our base ridership now, we'll be able to then use that new revenue from the fare box to extend our evening services. If we extend our evening services, we anticipate that we'll grow our base again and then we'll have additional revenue through the fare box to start looking at Sunday services. It's a sort of the chicken of the egg thing. I mean, I, I, since I've been in New Bedford and worked in the city, you've always heard the issue that certain needs weekend service or Sunday service, certain mm -hmm. needs late night services to get from point A to point B. But on the same token, you need the riders to make it work too. Right. And you know, which one comes first? Right. That was our hope here. Is we look at this as the foundation of the change. Now, we've been told please put out this service. And we received additional money from the state this past year to, to put out new services. And so we have started additional demand response service in the evenings and on Sundays. Uh, so that's step one. Uh, demand response is a variable cost that we need to kind of narrow down so we can understand what we can do for fixed route. Um, but if we can make this base increase where we get a stronger ridership, uh, I think we can really start to make some improvements here that everybody's been clamoring for. Are the issues the same in New Bedford as they are in Lowell and Springfield and Worcester? Are you dealing with the same things, ridership issues and, and, and that sort of stuff? Yeah, I would say that we're very closely akin to Lowell. Um, Worcester and, and Springfield um, have similar challenges, but they're much larger systems. They do have a little bit more funding because of that, so they have uh, more service. Uh, but our goal is to grow to be a system of that size. Uh, right now, Springfield provides almost 10 million trips a year where we only provide only around 2 million trips per year. So it'll take us some time to grow, but I think we have the opportunity down here to do that. One of the things people say, too, is that the issues that they have is that, you know, the bus doesn't it schedules. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's stuff that you haven't heard before, for crying yeah. out You know, you <laughs> have heard before, I should say. Uh, you know, where it drops you off, it's not convenient. I mean, all these things, uh, you know, factor into what you're doing here because... Absolutely. So we're, we're actually going through a comprehensive service analysis. Uh, so we're trying to identify as best we can at the moment where we have stronger ridership, where there's a need for more service, where we may need to reduce service because it's just not, it's not working out. Uh, but this fare box will actually give us some of that data. We'll be able to tell that at 8.20 in the morning, uh, riding from the south end to the terminal in New Bedford or in Fall River, uh, we had 22 passengers, which we think is fantastic. But, you know, uh, at the five, for instance, coming into the terminal, they only have three passengers at nine o'clock in the morning. Maybe we need to reevaluate where the five goes. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's not hitting the right areas. So that's something that we, we know we need to work on and we hope to uh, finish in the next few months. What, do you th what, what are some of the things that you've heard? I know you've been here for a year and I know you've been on our station before here. In, in, the, in your tenure so far, what are the positive things you've heard about uh, from customers of sort of that that may have surprised you. Uh, I think so far uh, people are are very, they feel very safe riding the bus. They're they're very sure that it's going to be there. So th that tells me that we are more or less on time most of the time. And, and there's always going to be times where we're late. Uh, that's that's definitely a struggle. But uh, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback about how 
nice and welcoming our drivers can be and how helpful they are. Um, our supervisors are out there all the time lending a hand to customers whenever they need it. Um, so that was one thing that I was very happy when I came here and I, and I heard that you know, we, people were having a very positive experience on the bus. What, is reliability the most important thing? Just being there on time every day, is that the most important thing? Absolutely. As long as you tell people when you're going to be there, then they know when you're going to be there. And if you know you're not going to be there for 10 minutes after a published time, well then we need to make a change. We either need to get the bus there when we say it's going to be there, or we need to change the published time to reflect when it's actually going to arrive. And I assume, and the other thing too is obviously that translates to the regular customers. Once they know that you're there at point A at a certain amount of time, or at, at a certain time, then they know, you know, it just helps your credibility. Absolutely. Yep. Talk to me for a second too about, uh, about the zones themselves. I mean, zones are different towns or are they different locations in the town? Well, effectively, in the cities in Fall River and New Bedford, you almost had two zones because the cities are cut in half by the terminals. Um, but it, when you draw it out on a map, it's really the community borders. Every community that you crossed into, you owed a new zone. So that's how you could get a trip that would be 5, 625, 750 very easily if you were going through multiple areas. So now that we're going to have no zones, it's only going to be $1.50 to get from point A to point B. And you will get a free transfer at the terminals. Um, so that's really going to help people out to make that connection to go to BCC from New Bedford or to go to UMass Dartmouth from Fall River. I think it's going to make some big changes. So, for example, in Mattapoisett, you pick the, I don't even know where they pick the bus up in Mattapoisett, <laughs> uh, but you, you're picking the bus up in Mattapoisett and the bus, does it go right to the terminal in a sense? I mean, there's no direct route, say, from Mattapoisett to BCC. Correct. Yeah, you, you have to make some transfers along the way. Um, uh, so if you were going to travel even from Fairhaven, for instance, you could travel right to the New Bedford Terminal from Fairhaven, and then f from the New Bedford Terminal, you'd fall travel to the Fall River Terminal, uh, and then from there, you could connect up to BCC. So in a sense, I mean, as you're talking about the transfers, that's where you're saving, exactly. saving a huge amount of money right. over the co course of a trip in a year, in a really. Year. And the other thing that uh, I mentioned is we are introducing new passes. We're going to have an all-day pass that you can purchase at the fare box. It's going to be $4. If you know you need to make five or six trips today or you're going to be out to school and you got to get to work afterwards, it may be easier to just get an all-day pass for 4 bucks. ride as much as you want, ride as much as you need to, and you may save some money that way. We're also going to be offering a seven-day pass for $14. And again, you just ride unlimitedly for, for uh, seven days. It's a, it reminds me of, of being in college in, in, in Boston and taking the tea. I mean, all you have to do is put one, at the time it was 60 cents, yep. and you could ride the tea for as long as you want, transfer all over the place, and yep. get to point A to point B, and you don't have to pay extra. Yep. And the last pass that uh, we're actually going to be offering is a monthly pass that is a 31-day rolling pass. So if you get it on January 15th, it's good till February 15th. Our current monthly pass is only good for a calendar month. month yeah. um, and our current monthly pass is $55. If you went to travel on the T, when we started doing all this work, we said that the, we realized the T's monthly pass was $55, or $59, I'm sorry. And they get a lot more service for $59 than we can offer you for $55. So we said, you know what, that's too expensive. We need to reduce the cost of our monthly pass. So we've reduced it to $40. And again, it is a rolling 31-day pass, so you will get it for a whole month uh, when you purchase it. As you talk about here, too, and I wanted to go over, uh, full fare, uh, $1.50. Yeah. Um, and that's just a regular flat rate for I get on wherever my bus stop is and I go to wherever. Right. Uh, reduced fare, who's that for? Those are for our senior and disabled passengers. Um, they'll be able to get a, a card from us uh, that looks just like the Charlie card. So nobody will be able to tell except for the driver and them. Um, and that will get them a, a half fare trip. Um, they'll be able to get the free transfers just like everybody else. And uh, also there's a monthly pass for our senior and disabled passengers that is $28. Uh, so that is a big discount as well. Transfers, it says one free. Uh, again, you're going from Fairhaven, you go to the terminal, that's free. Do you pay then to go to... If you have to go to uh, from the New Bedford terminal to the Fall River terminal, does that now cost you money? You'll be able to get from Fairhaven 
to Fall River for $1.50, but once you reach the Fall River, you'd have to pay for a new trip because you would have used your one free transfer in New Bedford. Okay. Uh, children under six are free still. Yep. Um, what's the difference, I guess, between one ride and full fare? Uh, the one ride pass that we have is really just an opportunity for agencies, really, to distribute trips to their clients. Okay. Um, so if, if, the, uh, if there was a job fair and somebody wanted to just hand out one-way passes uh, just to give people a chance to get on the bus, help them get places, maybe it's just to help them get home from the job fair, uh, that would be an opportunity for us to work with another organization to distribute trips. Uh, the one day you mentioned, that's $4, um, and that's... Unlimited use all day, right? Correct. Includes transfers and everything yep. else. Okay. Uh, the weekly pass, $14, as you mentioned. Again, uh, is that unlimited? Unlimited use, yeah. Unlimited use. The one thing I should note about uh, these multi-use passes is you wouldn't be able to give it to your friend standing behind you. Uh, the fare boxes are set up to know that, okay, you just put this in, and there's going to be a time lag of about 10 to 15 minutes before you can use that, that card again. Uh, so you wouldn't be able to pass it along to your friends. But if you were using cash value on a Charlie card, you could put it in twice, and you'd be able to get, get a trip for you and for your friend. Okay. Uh, the 10-ride pass, uh, pretty self-explanatory. That's uh, $14 as well. No, no difference, actually, between, I guess, is that the average between the week, most people using that amount of rides? Yeah, that's, that's really set up for, again, either agencies that are looking to distribute trips or somebody that rides maybe twice a week, and they just want to get a, get a pass, um, they'll be able to go and say, okay, get, let me get my 10-ride pass. That's what people are accustomed to using now, and that'll give them the opportunity to go out and run to the pharmacy and get back, mm -hmm. run out to the doctor and come back, and maybe not have to worry about having cash if they only ride a couple times a week. The 31-day pass you mentioned, $40. Uh, that's a discount uh, from what people are seeing now. Mm -hmm. And the 31-day pass for senior and disabled pass, that's $28 uh, per person. Mm -hmm. um, and you talk here about... Um, uh, the introducing the Charlie card here, which can be used on the MBTA and on CERTA buses to receive a discount fare. Correct. So that's a combination of uh, you working with uh, the Boston agency. Yes, yep. So they host the back end for everything for us, which is a huge cost savings uh, for us down here on the South Coast. Uh, and what you'll be able to do is you can load $20 of cash value onto your Charlie card, and you'll be able to get a reduced, a further reduction on your trip. So right now the fare is going to go to a dollar fifty. If you use cash value on your Charlie card, it would be a dollar forty, because we want to try to encourage people to use this whenever possible. What is there a typical person that uses? Do you have a profile of the typical person that uses or, or rides the bus? Right now, uh, most of our our passengers are either students, uh, senior and elderly folks, uh, or uh, people that are just looking to get back on their feet. So right now we're, we're serving the community that needs our service the most, and we hope to expand our services and, and grow our reliability uh, in the public so that commuters or choice riders can also ride, because that'll be really where we can start to build up our uh, revenues. Is that where you see, um, as you look at, as you mentioned, the, the Worcesters and the Springfields, uh, the, the bigger communities that have the bigger, do they have more commuters, more? Uh, more choice riders, yeah. More people are, are choosing transit over their cars, and, and part of that is their ser services are a little bit more convenient because they do have those later services, those later hours. Um, but they do have some more uh, people that are looking to go out there uh, instead of using their car. And some of that also has to do with technology. Uh, people can get cell phone apps nowadays. Uh, we're not set up for that yet. We hope to do that in the next couple of years, but again, that's a big investment. Um, but the example I always use is my wife. She supports me in my public transportation career, but there's no way she's going to sit out there and wait for a bus unless she knows it's coming. And if she has an app that tells her it's coming, she'll wait there all day. She'll wait 45 minutes if the, the app says it'll be there in 45 minutes. But if she's just banking on an old piece of paper that says the bus will be there in 45 minutes, she's not going to wait. And it's unfair to, to compare to Boston as well, which is just to me, apples and oranges compared to what you're doing here. Um, uh, because more people obviously in Boston just use <laughs> public transportation just to get around. You can't park or anything like that. So uh, why don't we take a break? That way we can show people the, the Charlie. 
yeah. uh, the trolley card and the machine uh, to show people how it works, and I um, uh, just sort of give people an education on how it works. Great. We'll be right back. We're talking to Eric Russo, administrator for the Southeast Regional Transit Authority here and the New Bedford Cable Network, and we'll be back in just a moment. Hi, we're back with Eric Russo, the administrator for the Southeastern Regional Transit Authority. We're talking about the, uh, I guess the only way I can describe it is new bus service. <laughs> <laughs> the new bus service, the new fare schedule, uh, the new bus schedule for uh, the communities here. And um, uh, taking effect here in early January, it's a good time for folks to, uh, uh, to learn about the, the changes that are going to take place. We have our new machine here. It's not R2-D2, but <laughs> it's pretty close. Um, so tell us a little bit about the machines. Now these are going to be everywhere, right? Yes, these are the new fare boxes, and you will see these on all of our fixed rail buses. Um, in our terminals, you'll also see ticket vending machines, which will be about 10 times the size of this. It may look a little intimidating at first, but we'll have some people there to help you use it when you first get there. So those will be in New Bedford and, uh, New Bedford and Fall River? Correct. And the other folks, these are going to be on the buses themselves? Right. Okay. Uh, why don't you just tell us a little bit about um, I guess the Charlie card and how, how this thing works, how are people going to experience it? Well, I know that a lot of people get a little worried when we start talking about new passes and, and new, new things you can do. But the important thing is you can still ride the old way. You can take your $1.50 and you can put it right into the machine, just like you would right now. It's going to read it. It says I've paid a dollar. I still owe 50 cents. I'm going to put in my two quarters. That little ding tells you you're all set to ride. Do you get a ticket to come out? Nope, when no. you first get on the bus, you don't need to uh, get a ticket. But if you do want to transfer later, you do have to ask the driver for a transfer and he'll hit the button for you and then they'll issue a transfer right out of the fare box. So what, is, so what does the transfer mean? You, when you go onto the next bus? Correct. You will, you want to use that's this. your free transfer? Right. Okay. Yep, so you'll, you'll need this ticket when you're paying cash to get onto the next bus. Okay. And also, uh, one thing that we've added this time around, which we didn't have the ability to do before, is we're going to issue change tickets. Currently, if you put a $5 bill into the fare box and you owed $250, unfortunately, you wouldn't get any money back. But now, as long as you pay at least a dollar over your fare, we can issue a change card for a dollar or more, whatever it happens to be. So if I put my $5 in, you've lost all this money now. <laughs> It's all gone. Well, right here, I have a card. It says stored value. The initial stored value is 350. Right. And you can just keep using this to pay for your fares. Now the key is, as he mentioned too, is that it's got to be a dollar over. So if you are going on the bus and you put two dollars into the bus, you're not going to get a card that says you've got 50 cents credit. That's correct. Um, it's almost wiser to put in three dollars yep. uh, so that you get your dollar fifty and, in a sense, an another ride. Correct. Um, Absolutely. So that seems pretty simple, um, and, and obviously it, it handles all sorts of bills up to tens, yep. twenties. Tens, twenties. We can you can take it all. Um, I don't think we take fifties or hundreds, but okay. uh, and it also take dollar change, uh, dollar coins, uh, which you'll be getting from our ticket vending machines in the terminals. And again, if you put in the tens and the twenties, it'll share on your uh, on the sh uh, the shared value. It's just going to have that amount. Correct. That you have over. Yep. Okay. And you'll be able to load cash value onto your Charlie card either at the terminal or at the fare box. If you do it at the fare box, you need to put at least $5 onto the card. Uh, so you would be able to take a $10 bill and just let the driver know, you know, I'd like to load $10 of stored value onto my Charlie card. And he'll punch in the buttons over here, tell you to put tap your card, put in your money, and tap your card again, and you'll be all set. And you'll have your $10 on here, and you'll be able to ride for a discount. Okay, so that's how the card works. The card's got a yep. something in the background, I guess. Yep, it's just a smart card, and this is a, a tap target. Um, and it knows when you come up here, okay, what is it that uh, 
your fare is. If it's a, a discount card, it'll know automatically, okay, mm -hmm. you're able to ride at a discount and it'll charge you 70 cents or 75 cents. Um, if you're paying full fare, it'll charge you $1.40 because uh, you get a 10 cent discount for cash value transactions on a Charlie card. So at the terminal, though, that's where you can, in a sense, it's, I think of it like a debit card. Yeah. At the terminal, you're putting the money in, putting it on your, uh, on your Charlie card. Exactly. Um, here on the bus, you have to ask the, the bus driver to do it. Right. Yep. And you can also load your monthly pass on here, seven-day pass, an all-day pass, whichever, whatever works best for you. So though, in a sense, the cards are for your more frequent travelers. Correct. Um, yep. Those that are just taking the day or, uh, you know, like you said, the two, two days a week or whatever, those, yep. are, those people are still going to be using the coins and the, and the dollar bills just to get around. Most likely, but these cards are good for about two years. So if it's somebody that does regularly ride twice a week for 52 weeks, then it may be worth it for them to move to a Charlie card. What are the things that uh, people should keep in mind as they're using this? Is there anything, it doesn't seem that difficult, but is there anything that uh, people should be aware of as they're using them? Um, the other thing that I, I didn't mention is when you use your Charlie card to pay a cash fare, your transfer is automatically loaded onto the Charlie card. So you don't even have to ask the driver for that transfer. And it's not going to spit out a ticket like it did before that lets you know you have a transfer. Mm -hmm. uh, the transfer is timed. It is a 90-minute transfer. Um, and one of the things that uh, we should point out is that if you were to ride the one in one direction, and you wanted to return, you wouldn't be able to use that transfer because now you're, really you're starting a new trip. If you're riding, riding the one away from the terminal and now you need to take the one to get back to the terminal, it's really a new trip. The transfer is designed to go from the one to the nine or from the nine to the five or where, wherever it is that you need to go next. Right, it's still in, the, in a sense the same direction. Right. right. Um, people might be intimidated by these still. It's a new change. Uh, maybe yeah. some of our senior citizens or what have you. Um, obviously, the bus drivers are going to have to be critical in, in this implementation. Absolutely. And, and you know, this is a big change for them, too. We're, we're changing our fares all around again, like I mentioned. Uh, that's going to be a lot for them to try to remember. And we're asking them to learn how to use this new piece of equipment that has more buttons and bells and whistles than I know what to do with. So it, it's going to be a big adjustment for everybody. So I think if we're all patient with each other, it's going to turn out to be a fantastic uh, new opportunity for everyone. And the one thing you mentioned, too, off camera, and I don't think that we talked about before, this machine is going to help you sort of uh, determine routes, determine what's going on uh, throughout the, the, the department, the agency. Absolutely. This is going to tell us where our ridership is. We'll know that we have 50 people that are riding from Fall River to New Bedford at 10 o'clock in the morning. And we'll know that there isn't anybody riding at 11 o'clock. Maybe we can take that 11 o'clock trip move it to a 9.30 trip to get a little bit more frequency when it's more popular to ride. Seems simple. Seems really simple enough. I guess what, uh, before we end the show, I just say, yes, what are the things that you want to review for the folks that uh, they, they need to know when this, this goes into effect on January 7th? Obviously, we'll, the show will play after that because it's going to be new. But what are the things that you want people just to, to emphasize to folks here? Well, just to remember that uh, there are no more zones. That's a big thing. Um, we're going to have a free transfer at the terminals mostly. Uh, so it's a little bit difficult, but any inbound trip will transfer to an outbound trip. So the idea is when you're traveling to a, a terminal, you'll be able to travel away from that terminal at the same time. Um, and uh, just be uh, open to a new experience. You never know when uh, uh, trying a monthly pass may work out for you. It is $40, so that is a good chunk of change, but it is a big re reduction over what we currently ask for. Um, and that just be patient with your drivers when we start, because it's going to be difficult for them, too. For people who have questions, want to know what routes are going on, if they need to know, uh, if they're watching this and they'd like to try the bus, but they don't know where to go, where to pick it up, where can people go for that? The best place to start is our website at srtabus.com. Um, that has all of our route information, all of our fare information. That's where we put all of our updates for services. That's really the best place to start. And they can call our office also at uh, 508 Nine nine seven six seven six seven. All right, sounds great. Good luck at the start. Um, hopefully, we'll see you again. Great. And when in, with the, some good news too about this. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. That's going to do it. I'm Jim Marshall, with the New Bedford Cable Network. Thanks for watching, everyone.